So we are now studying what has been promised from the beginning. In the beginning, there was God. Then basically you had God created creating Elohim, yes. And then God creating mankind. So then there's a fallen Elohim and then there's a fallen man. Yes, so how many classes are there now? If you include God, then there is what? God, Elohim, then fallen Elohim, then fallen man. So there are there's four, yeah? Into that was born whom? Jesus. So then Jesus is God, yes? So you have Jesus, God, then Jesus, yes? And then you have the other classes. And so you are called to take the fallen man and bring it to Jesus' class. That's called born again, yes? But then you are called to what? Give that message, the good news, to others. Remember, I wrote, put this all in triangles, yes? So you have Jesus and the saved man, then you have Satan and the fallen, fallen Elohim, and then you have the fallen man. So you're called to what? Preach to the fallen man. Why? Because eventually there will be a judgment. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. And there will be a lake of fire. And if your name is not in the book of life, you'll go into the lake of fire. That's what the Bible says. This is a triangle gospel basically. But coming back to the promise. A Messiah was promised in the Old Testament. Go to Genesis 3.15. says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman in your seed and her seed he, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel this is God speaking to whom to the serpent yes so this is the promise of the Messiah or the beginning of the promise of the redemption do, do you understand it it starts in Genesis 3:15, and then I taught you about how God abandoned humanity and then chose Abraham. Yes? Yes? Go to Genesis 12.3. God is speaking to Abraham. It says, I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This is part of the messianic prophecy. So through Abraham, the Savior will come. Yes? So Abraham had many children. But the firstborn is... Isaac, yes? Go to Genesis 17, 9. Then God said, No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear your son, and you shall call his name Isaac, and I will, I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. Yes? So God, being a covenant God, will establish a covenant with whom? Isaac. That's in Genesis 17, 9. Yes? So Isaac had how many kids? Okay. You said two. Yeah, you're sure about that. Okay. Two. Okay. So after that, God chooses Jacob. Yes? Go to Numbers 24, 17. It says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy the son of Tumult. Yes? That is talking about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, yes? So he is going to be born from the tribe of Judah. Who is Judah? One of the sons of Jacob, yes? How many children did Jacob have? Twelve, yes? Go to Genesis 49, 10. It says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. If you go to Isaiah 7.14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel is Jesus, yes? God with us, yes? So, some people say the virgin means young girl. That is not a sign from God, yes? Any young girl can have a child, but a virgin birth is miraculous. Eh? If you go to Psalm 69 verse 8, it says he was rejected. Jesus was rejected by his own people, yes? In John, if you read, 
He says, though he came to those whom he had created, but they did not recognize him. Yes? In Psalm 69, verse 8, he says, I have become a stranger to my brothers and alien to my mother's children. Yes? In Isaiah 53, 3, he says, He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. This is talking about Jesus Christ. So he was despised and rejected by men. Like I said, there are a lot of scriptures pointing to Jesus Christ that have been fulfilled in the first coming. And there are still more scriptures pointing to the second coming. Do you understand? Go to Psalm 16 verse 10. It says, For you will not leave my soul in Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. Now, when, you, when I first read corruption, I was thinking on human terms. But corruption is connected to 2 Corinthians 5.21. He who knew no sin became sin for us. Do you understand? He did not know corruption at all. But he took on our corruption. Yes? Do you understand? But God did not leave his soul in Sheol or in hell. Do you understand? In third, on the third day, Jesus was res- 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 resurrected. Yes? Yes. Go to Isaiah 53. If you, if you can read from 5 to 10 later. But it says Messiah would be a sacrifice for our sin. Yes? Isaiah 53 verse 5. Uh, it says, But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Yes? Do you understand? So all this is mentioned in the Old Testament. There is a promise of the Redeemer. Do you understand? Yes? And that the Messiah would return a second time is also there in the Old Testament. Go to Daniel 7, 13 to 14. Daniel 7, 13 to 14. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient days, day, ancient, ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. And he said to him, Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. You can read this later, yes? But this is talking about the return of Jesus. Do you understand? A stone that was built without hands destroyed all the other kingdoms and grew. So let him who has wisdom understand this. It was not common knowledge. It is for those who seek him. Yes? Do you understand? Like this I could go on. But what I'm trying to say is that the Messiah was promised in the Old Testament. Do you understand? His first advent and his second coming. Here's short selected chronology for our study. What I've taught so far. So first there's God. Remember the triangle gospel? Yes. There's Elohim. After he made the Elohim, he made what? The earth. Yes. And then he made the humans. Yes. Yes. So he made humans with choice. He did not make them as robots. There was a tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then you had the fall. Yes. At the fall, there, there was a promise of a savior. Yes. Yes. And because of the fall, there was false knowledge. I taught you on all this. There was a corruption in DNA, yes? Because of all of that, God judged the world with a flood. And after the flood, humans wanted the technology that was pre-flood. So they wanted access to that technology. And who had that technology? They Elohim did in the spiritual realm. So they built a portal that we know as the city and tower of Babylon, yes? So God came down and confused the language and he divided the nations. And in Genesis chapter 12, as we read, he chose whom Abraham, yes? Abraham was told to sacrifice Isaac, yes? To test his heart. One instruction was to sacrifice him and second was 
not to sacrifice him. He listened to both. If he didn't listen to both, Isaac would be dead. Yes. Then, through Isaac, God promised the genealogy of the Savior. Yes. So you have Esau and Jacob. Yes. Remember the two sons. Yes. Esau forsook his birthright. Birthright is important. If you're the firstborn, you're not called to forsake your birthright, because who gives you that authority to be firstborn? God does. Do you understand? And Esau also wanted to kill Jacob. Yes. So Jacob flees from there, and he goes to where? Laban. When he goes and works for Laban, he worked for seven years for Rachel, but he got Leah instead. So he worked another seven years for Rachel. Yes. Why? That seven years seemed nothing. to him yes because he was in love yes but he kept on working and later he decided to run away you understand so why in the process of running away jacob wrestles with a man from god yes we're not going to uh, discuss who he is what he is and what not an angel yes and jacob becomes israel jacob has 12 sons yes Yes, how that happens and all that you can read your Bible. Yes, out of that twelve sons, there was Joseph. Joseph had a Technicolor dream coat. His father gave him that. Yeah, so Joseph had this Technicolor dream coat, and he had a lot of dreams and visions, which made his brothers jealous. Yes, and so they sold him, and he became a pr- like he went to the pit. From the pit, he went to the prison, and from the prison, he went to the palace. Yes. That's Joseph's story in Egypt. Yes, so then there was a famine in the land, and Israel goes to Egypt. Yes, all this you read now in Egypt, Israelites become slaves. Where where do they become slaves? In Egypt. Egypt represents the world. When you read the Bible, it says all the time, go down to Egypt and go up to where? Jerusalem. Coming back, who saves them? Moses. Yes, but God saves them. Yes. And through Moses, there was a law given at Mount Sinai, and then there were spies sent out to the Promised Land. Yes, and how many spies were sent out? Twelve spies. Out of the twelve spies, ten bought a bad report, two bought good report. Who were the two? Joshua and Caleb. Yes, and because of that, they had what we know as the desert wandering, because even though the Lord promised. They looked at circumstances, and the Lord said, "Okay, none of you will make it." So their children, led by Joshua, leads Israel to the Promised Land. Joshua sent spies. How many did he send? Twelve or two? Ah, there's a reason behind that. Yes. Where did he, where did he send those spies to? Jericho. Jericho, or Jericho. Is generally thought to derive from the Canaanite word "ria," which means fragrant. This is, if you go to Israel, this is what they'll say Jericho is. But the real meaning of Jericho is that it originates in the Canaanite word for the moon, that is Yaria. I may be pronouncing it wrong, or the name of the lunar deity Yarik. For whom the city was an early center of worship. If you read the stone tablets, they say that Yarik, or where you, if you go to Jericho, you find the illuminator of heavens, or the illuminator of the myriad of stars, and the Lord of the sickle. This is in Jericho. Remember, there is a reason for everything being there. Yes, the Lord of the sickle. Yes. The sickle is represented as a crescent moon. Which religion, you know, is represented by the crescent moon? Ha! Huh, yes. And how was Jericho won by Joshua or by the Lord? By the, by the Lord. The Lord gave instructions. What those instructions are, how it was followed, is relevant for us today. How did the walls of Jericho? Come down, straight, by the hand of God, not by human hands. You understand? Yes. 
because it's relevant for us today. Because our struggle is not against what? Flesh and blood. It's not against humans. Start with what God said to Moses. What did he say? What is in your hand? God has given you the tool. You don't have to go searching for it. What is in your hand? Huh? With that, go on. And the Lord will do the rest. Yes? Hallelujah. We do not want to end this message of hope and love without letting you know that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved.